Hello and uh, welcome, Chris. It's so lovely to see you again. Good to see you too. <laughs> I'm very excited about um, your training that we've got with you in June, Sexual Boundary Violations um, in Psychotherapy. And I was wondering if we could just, you know, have a little bit of a chat about um, this very confronting issue. And um, I'm wondering how did you uh, become uh, involved in researching and, um, and lecturing? Uh, about sexual uh, boundary violations? Well, it actually went back to my original work, which was studying incest and um, sexual abuse, and it grew from there, and, and also rape, and learning from some rape victims that I worked with that they had been abused by a therapist in the context of therapy. But also, over the course of my career, which was about 45 years now, I have had numerous brushes with um, colleagues and employees and trainees um, who have gotten sexually involved with patients. And I've had to face some of the fallout of that. And I consider myself collateral damage to some of these situations. So, and from a client perspective, I also treat many individuals who were hurt in within the, the therapy. So um, all of these experiences have made me uh, aware of the issue is seriousness and the need to really talk about it. Mm. And I think, you know, that this is uh, an issue for people who are going to be doing your training that uh, on the one hand, they might be feeling this is something I really need to know and understand about. Um, but on the other hand, it's also very confronting to have to, you know, consider these, you know, these issues that, that can occur in therapy. And I'm just wondering, you know, what has been some of the personal impacts for you working in this area? Um, the personal impacts, first of all, have been shock um, because of um, some of the individuals involved who were very close to me. Um, and I'll give you an example. Um, in my private practice, I had a young trainee who started work with me and she had left a, a previous uh, placement, training placement, and she was sexually involved with a male patient. And that is an unusual parent, number one. So I wasn't prepared for that, nor was I prepared to have my new intern come in and learn that um, this was happening. And the man that she was involved with had learned that it was unethical and he called me and threatened me with a lawsuit when I knew nothing about it. So that was my first brush, but also knowing of colleagues and I had two employees who got sexually involved with um, patients. And one of those situations resulted in a lawsuit. So I've had um, very many personal exposures. Um, you know, it didn't happen to me, but it happened around me and um, also having to deal with staff um, when they felt betrayed by a colleague. There are a lot of different ramifications. And so what I decided and the two co-editors of the book that we published by the same title as, as the workshop was that we need to talk about this. We need to break through the aversion. We need to um, bring it to people's attention. Uh, it is shameful and it is something that makes people recoil but it could happen to any of us. Um, and there are many different ways that it happens. So the more we learn about it, and also the more we learn about the damage that it causes, I think that's a preventive that has not been talked about before. You know, all of us have taken the ethics courses, at least in the US, what they tell us is, don't get sexually involved because it, there's a liability issue. They don't say because people get hurt. They yeah. do say yeah. you might get sued. Um, so we're trying to shift the lens and say, you don't do this because first of all, it is illegal and it's unethical, but you need to know that it creates enormous amounts of damage and it's collateral damage as well. Um, therapists have lost their, their licenses, their professions, their families, um, their child custody, um, all kinds of things. And that's the therapist, the patients themselves um, often go through years and years of misery trying to figure out how this happened and what happened to them and feeling very defiled and 
in going back to my original work, I call this professional incest because there should be a very clear boundary of yeah. not being sexually involved between a therapist and a client. Well, Chris, I'm so grateful that you're you're doing this work, and I feel very you know honoured and excited to have you come and present to us uh, here in in Australia mm -hmm. or virtually in Australia. Yes. Um, yep. on this really, really um, important subject. So I'm very much looking forward to connecting with you again um, in June. And all of you who are watching this um, video, I look forward to seeing you online too. So see you in a couple of months. Okay, thank you.